Welcome back to STEM Storytime. My name is Taylor, and today we are going to be reading Ada's Violin, the, the story of the Recycled Orchestra of Paraguay by Susan Hood. After that, we're going to talk about how we at home can make our own instruments. All right, let's begin. Ada Rios grew up in a town made of trash. Every morning at dawn, Ada heard the first garbage trucks rumble and roll down the road to Kateura. Beep, beep, beep. Backing into the landfill, they tipped their loads up and up and crash. The trash came tumbling down 1,500 tons each day. Ada and her friends watched as the cancheros, recyclers, scrambled, tearing into plastic bags with long-handled hooks, pushing aside moldy produce and grabbing anything they could recycle or sell. The going rates? Five cents for a pound of cardboard, 10 cents for a pound of plastic. This noisy, stinking, sweltering slum was not the most nurturing neighborhood. Ada watched, eyes wide, but she didn't say much. And yet, she liked to imagine each garbage truck was a box of surprises. One never knew what might be inside. Her father had found appliances, toys, perfumes, and antique watches. One woman even discovered a small box full of gold jewelry. Little did Ada know, there was a bigger surprise waiting for her in the landfill. Every day, when Ada's parents went to work, Grandmother Miriam cared for Ada and her little sister, Noelia. Grandma loved to sing rock and roll songs from the 1960s. The girls grew up to the tunes of the Beatles, Simon and Garfunkel, and Credence Clearwater Revival. Ada loved to sing too, but only when no one was listening. Ada's dad brightened the night with stories and songs of great musicians. He turned up the radio and pointed out the sounds each instrument made. Ada heard one above all others. Zing went the strings of the violin. When the girls started school, grandma returned to work as a recycler, collecting bottles and cans in the city. Classes let out at noon. Young Ada was in charge of Noelia until her parents were done with work. At first, the girls stayed close to home, playing with Grandma Miriam's doggies and making sandcakes in the dirt. Soon, they joined their cousins, playing hide-and-seek or a game of handball in the streets. In time, they ventured further afield, walking down to the bodega to get candy. But Ada noticed the teenagers hanging out in the alleys, grumbling about life in the landfill looming ahead. What would happen to them? To her? To her little sister? She watched as the older kids turned to gangs and got into fights. One day, when Ada was 11 years old, her grandmother saw a sign posted on the wall of a chapel. Violin, guitar, cello taught Saturdays at 8 a.m. Fabio Chavez. How grandma had longed to learn music. Too late for her, maybe, she thought, but not for her granddaughters. She signed them up without asking them or their parents. Ada's heart sang out. Thanks to her abuela, she could leave her worries behind and learn to play. At the first class, the teacher, Fabio Chavez, had three guitars and two violins to share. Ada chose a violin right away, but 10 children had signed up. Frustrated, Ada and her friends found that there were not enough instruments to go around. And there was a bigger problem. Everyone quickly realized the children would need to practice at home. 
but it wasn't safe to be seen with an expensive instrument in Kateura, where a violin is worth more than a house. Watching the children play amid broken glass and rusty metal, Senor Chavez knew he had to do something. He remembered a band called Les Luthiers that made its own instruments. That was it. He asked Nicolas Cola Gomez, a ganchero and carpenter, for help. Senor Gomez found a discarded drum with a big hole in it. What could he use to fix it? He picked through the trash and discovered an old x-ray film. Would that work? It did. Senor Gomez kept experimenting and others like Tito Romero helped. Inventing instruments wasn't easy, but they fiddled around, discovering what materials hit just the right notes. They transformed oil drums into cellos, water pipes into flutes, and packing crates into guitars. Soon there were enough instruments for all the children who wanted to play. Ada chose a violin made from an old paint can, an aluminum baking tray, a fork, and pieces of wooden crates. Worthless to thieves, it was invaluable to her. It was a violin of her very own. Senor Chavez set up a strict schedule of three-hour lessons. The class had no classroom, so they played outside, despite the 100-degree heat and sudden downpours. At first, Ada and the others struggled. Sharps and flats clanged and clashed. Playing an instrument is a process. It doesn't matter if one is rich or poor, ugly, fat, thin. You cannot learn to play an instrument overnight, Senor Chavez told the children. Some kids decided it was too much work and gave up, but not Ada. After lessons, she would practice at home, sometimes two hours a day. In time, the screeches, twangs, and tweets all hit the right notes. Their class became a small island where Chavez taught them to respect themselves and one another. Be kind, always say please and thank you. Say you're sorry, be dedicated when you commit to something, Senor Chavez told the children. Soon the ragtag crew of kids learned to tune in, to listen to one another, to band together. The recycled orchestra was born. From then on, there was something new in the air in Cateura. Gancheros trudging home from the landfill might lift their heads to hear the sounds of Ada's violin, or the strains of Bebe's cello, or the strum of Noelia's guitar. A symphony of sound helped to lift them beyond the heat, the stench, and their aching backs. With her violin, Ada could close her eyes and imagine a different life. She could soar high on the bright, bittersweet notes to a place far away. She could be who she was meant to be. As Ada's skill grew, so did her confidence. Once timid, she now took center stage playing solos. She helped teach the younger children too. Her teachers and fellow students took note. When she was 12 years old, Ada was named a first violinist. Imagine, she was first at something. Shortly after, she and her 39 fellow musicians were invited to perform concerts in Cateura and later in the nearby capital city of Asuncion. Word of this extraordinary orchestra spread. Soon they were asked to perform in other cities and even other countries. Ada and her friends flew on their first airplane, stayed in their first hotel, swam in the bright blue waters of Rio de Janeiro, sampled their first pastries and pineapple and saw sights they never imagined. The world dazzled them just as they dazzled the world.
When Ada was 16, the orchestra received a very special invitation. They were asked to tour with a world famous rock band. More than 35,000 people awaited them at their first concert stop in Bogota, Colombia. Ada was more than nervous. She didn't know how to enter or how to greet the audience. She went blank. She saw a giant stage with glaring lights and heard people screaming. But she didn't have to worry. As the recycled orchestra took the stage, the people who had paid to see the rock band cheered for them. The enormous audience sang and swayed to the music as the orchestra played. And as their performance came to a close, a crescendo of cheers, chants, and applause resounded across the park. The astonished kids bowed, grinning at one another. They had discovered the surprise awaiting them in the landfill. Buried in the trash was music, and buried in themselves was something they could be proud of. So that was the story of Ada and her violin. So her violin was made out of a whole bunch of different recycled materials that people found in the dump. Other people had thrown them away, but, pe but someone in her village turned it into an instrument so that she could learn how to play it. So learning music, I think, is super important. I learned how to play when I was a little girl. I actually got a violin when I was six years old. Mine was not made out of trash, but I do remember I loved to hear and figure out how all of the things in my house could be played as instruments too. You guys can do that as well. If you don't have an instrument at home, maybe you don't have any kind of pianos or anything like that, you can look around your house and try to make your own music. So today I want to show you how you can make something really simple. All you need is a couple of glasses and some water drinking glasses particularly. So I have a couple different types here. I've got this small tea glass or teacup. I've got this fluted glass here and just a regular glass you might find in your cabinet. So you need any kind of glass you can get and a pitcher of water. So ask your parents, ask someone if it's okay that you play with some glass because you have to be very careful not to break it, but you're gonna need some glass, water, and then a mallet of some sort. I'm using this pencil and I'm using it as a mallet, which is something that you use to hit a, an instrument. So drums have mallets, xylophones have mallets, and that's what I'm teaching you how to make today. So. You can use the mallet just like this. I use the little metal end of this pencil here. Lightly tap on the glass. And you hear that it has a note. It's got a certain pitch. So a fun experiment you can try is making different notes by adding water. So on its own, the glass sounds like this. But let's see what happens if I add some water to it. The note is much lower now. So before, the note was high. Now, it's low. So at all the different levels, you can make a ton of different notes. It depends on how big your glass is. So I worked hard this afternoon to make a xylophone. So these, these seven glasses here, these teacups, they have different amounts of water in them. So this one over here 
This has just a little bit of water in it. The one next to it has a little more, a little more, see, even more here until we get all the way over to these ones, which are so full, I'm not even gonna try to move them because I'm afraid I'll spill them. So take your mallet. I like to tap on the handle of the glass. I think it gives it a nice sound, but look what happens when you tap them all in order. Did you hear that? I just played a scale. Now it wasn't a full scale. I don't have quite all the notes that it would take, but my glasses actually aren't big enough for me to do a complete scale like you'd get with a real xylophone. But I did find seven distinct notes here that I could play with this same size glass and different amounts of water. You can do it too at home. So definitely ask your parents permission and set up set it up somewhere where you might not, you know, you can get a little messy because we are playing with water here and find something like a pencil, uh, something that's not going to break the glass if you hit it and just lightly tap on it. And you too can make a xylophone. Some other cool ideas, if you had other ingredients at home, you can change the color of the water if you want so that you have a colorful xylophone. Um, try experimenting with bigger glasses to see if you can get more notes out of the same kind of glass. I was only able to find seven notes, but could you find more maybe? Um, there's so many things you can do. I looked up what these notes were as I was playing them and I think this one, one of them in here is an F. If you look up music and if you want to know what the actual note is, you can also um, download an app on, on a phone to find out a, a pitch tuner and you can play a note and the, your phone will tell you what note you are playing. Um, ask a parent's permission before you go downloading anything though. Really simple, really fun. I spent a good amount of time today trying to get each of them evenly filled so that I could play different notes and make them all distinct. But see what you can do at home. See how much fun you can have making your own music. Thanks for joining me. Bye.